Okay. Um, well, good evening, everyone. Welcome, welcome. Um, sorry that we're a little bit late. We have a technical, couple of technical issues to solve. Uh, so we should start with the agenda. <clears throat> Today is May the 13th, 2024. Uh, and we're going to start with the land acknowledgement. Uh, the city of Boulder acknowledges that the city is on the ancestral lands of um, an unceded territory of indigenous people who have lived and stored these lands in the Boulder Valley since immemorial times. Uh, we recognize that it's in their land that we do this work for, um, for our community and uh, recognizing that uh, we show um, honor and respect um, to our ancestors. Um, on the next uh, topic for the group, I want to remind everyone of our community agreements. I just sent an email with them, so you can have them on the top of your uh, email list. And these uh, community agreements were really like a guidance for our group to um, keep us engaged in our meetings, and uh, they. We, we came up with this in our work group uh, that happened a couple of weeks ago. So um, just a reminder, uh, if you want to take a look at them to keep the conversation going. So um, first order of business is uh, the approval of our April minutes. So we need a motion. Motion to approve the minute. Okay, second. Okay, perfect. All those in favor, say aye. Perfect. We have a whole vote. Um, so we're gonna. Uh, I sh just shared that Victor is not gonna be able to to join us today, so I'm facilitating. Bear with me, please. My first time. Um, and we're going to start with community uh, committee updates. So, uh, community engagement and communications committee, if you want to lead us, Milan. Sure, sure. Um, so, the um, community engagement and communication committee met on Let's see, on um, May 2nd, um, we talked about, we debriefed about um, our um, gathering, that the gathering that we had um, on April 12th. Um, that was an informal gathering where we, most of us were there. Unfortunately, two, two members were not able to make it, but um, we were all there in the room and it was, uh, very nice to to be together and not talk panel business for a few hours. Um, so I um, we collected some feedback that I'm happy to share here. Um, I made a quick summary of it. Um, a lot of people mentioned the, how great it was to have personal connections outside of a um, business meeting or um, panel meeting. Um, great to know um, people in uh, in a different ways, in different way. Um, uh, great to interact informally um, in the same with all of us in the same room. Um, some people wish that we had had more time, um, mm -hmm. like at, at least an hour. But I think if we had had an hour more, we would have wanted more. Um, it was pretty fun to be together and to to really get to know each other outside of the panel. Um, we also asked in our feedback um, request when how often people would like to see this happening. And it seems like most people said twice a year. So the panel, the committee, the engagement committee is already thinking about the next date, um, probably September, October, so that we can um, set the date and everybody can organize their schedule around that. Um, and hopefully we'll all be together in that room knowing that life happens uh, as well. But um, 
So we're looking at doing it twice a year. Um, um, the other point of um, discussion that we had um, was um, our, for the engagement with community, uh, we made a list of uh, different organizations that we're gonna um, try to um, contact and hopefully meet with in, in the next few months. Um, and so we, we have a few organizations, uh, but uh, I would love for all of you to give us organizations that you're think thinking of so that we can add them and make sure that we're not forgetting anybody who needs to be at the conversation table with, with the panel. So feel free, feel free to send me um, your the organizations that you care about, that you know about, um, so that we can um, contact them. Um, we also talked about different events that are happening in Boulder, where we could have a table, such as the farmer's market or the Boulder, um, the Boulder Creek Festival. <laughs> I've been there enough times and I can't remember the name right now. The Boulder Creek Festival, um, the um, What's Up Boulder, um, Sherry mentioned that, that we might um, consider as well. Um, so there again, if you think about events that uh, would be really good for us to be uh, present at, and especially if they are events um, with community members that are, um, have been historically excluded, that would be wonderful uh, to know, I'm just uh, doing, share information with them. I just realized. Um, so um, we've also been working on flyers with the city of Boulder and Cherry um, to put in key places around Boulder so that we can be more visible and um, present information on the panel at like rec centers and other places around Boulder. So I know Sherry has been, you've been you've been looking into uh, where we can put those those flyers. Um, uh, but we've we've been working on flyers and um, trifold um, brochures, and I think we're going to be working also on posters so that when we have tables, we have things to give and also larger posters that we can show people and talk, talk when we talk to people and be visible. Um, so those are the things that we've been talking about. One of the things that we're going to um, also talk about during our hopefully our next meeting is the budget. Um, so please um, think about um, what needs to, what this panel needs in general, but especially for community engagement. I mean, that's what is interesting to us as a committee, but, but also anything that you think this panel needs in terms of budget, please, um, do send it to, to me right now. Um, I think that's the, um, easiest and I'll make sure to, um, get all of your, um, thoughts and needs for this panel um, together and present it to um, Sherry and to the city and Nuria so that we can make sure that we have enough, um, um, a good enough budget for the next um, year. So um, it's really, really key and we want to be able to uh, really reach rich community. So please put your caps on and help us get that um, solidified. Um, the other thing that I wanted to talk about is chair, co-chair for the eng committee um, engagement, um, community engagement committee. And um, Soledad, I just want to pass it on to you and see what you want to do if you want to keep doing you know, being on this committee or not. I know we've discussed both ways, so I just want to hear from you if that's okay, and then we can uh, continue that conversation. Yeah, sure. So I uh, I will totally stay engaged in the committee. I don't think I have the capacity to be a co-chair with you without letting you down repeatedly. 
Uh, and I know they'll have great people also uh, engage in the committee. So um, so I think that we need another co-chair unless uh, you, I mean, also I think there's an uh, option of you chairing the committee by yourself, but I don't know how you feel about that. Um, so if, you know, if we don't have volunteers, but um, in short, my position is open and available. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Soledad. Um, so yes, the position is open. I personally prefer working with people, so I would love to have a co-chair. Um, I think it's really great to have dialogue and communicate and bounce ideas. And then, um, um, so I would, I would really love to have a co-chair. I don't have to, but if there, I, I know Madeline had said that she was interested. Bill, you said you were interested. Um, Luna, we talked about it. I'm not sure whether you're interested or not. So I would love to hear. Madeline is not here. So I'm going to just for now assume that she's still interested. But um, um, Luna, Bill, if you want to let me know if you're still interested, that would be great. And then we'll have to figure out how we do it if we have several people interested in doing this. Uh, Bill, do you want to take it? Sorry, I told Cherry I'm traveling and I have really sketchy Wi-Fi. That's why my camera's yeah. not on. Um, I'm interested, but if Madeline is really wanting to do that, I would uh, support her because I know she's been involved a long time and engaged in the community. So I'm open either way in terms of that, but I would like to hear from Madeline first to see if she's interested. Sounds great. Thank you so much. Because she, she has a nice history with the panel as well. And I'm still mm -hmm. very wanting to be supportive of the community engagement work. So you can always count me to be there. Amazing. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Luna? I am not feeling like I have the capacity for it, but I really appreciate the, uh, the offer. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, all right. Well, um, since Madeline is not here, we're not going to decide today who it is, but um, you'll hear from us um, as soon as Madeline is in a position to respond. Um, and um, yeah, I think that's it for me right now. I'm just wondering if anybody else has any, um, any comments or any questions um, on what I just said. No questions. Great. Okay. Thank you, Soida. Thank you, Milan. Um, Legacy Committee. Yes. Uh, well, we met last month on the 25th. Um, we got the data that we had requested from the B BPD uh, regarding uh, their interaction with juveniles. And at the last meeting, we had Daniel Reinhardt and Alistair McNear, and essentially they went through how they compiled the data and gave us a few pointers on how to read the data um, so that come next time around, we are meeting on the 23rd. Um, we should start looking through the data to see how what trends we can come up with or what stories we can tell with the data. So that's where we're at. We should have uh, further details regarding this uh, next month's meeting. Uh, by then, the legacy would have looked at the data in greater detail. So, Liz, is there anything I've missed out? Uh, no, I think you summed it up. I'll just say the data is available in the legacy folder for folks who aren't on the committee as well, or if you're interested in digging into it with us, please let us know and join the next meeting. It should be interesting. That's all from legacy committee. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Um, next in our agenda is an update in the bylaw working group. Um, Paris here, so far I'm gonna put you on the spot. You oh, it looks like my camera's not working. Can you hear me though? 
Yes. Oh, here we go. It's okay. Hi, everybody. Good to see you. Um, thank you again for allowing me to participate in your work group um, in April. Um, <clears throat> I was mostly listening, but it was nice to see you guys. I could see the connections being made and you guys really being able to get to know each other um, on a different level. So that was really great as an observer to see. Um, so I have just a, a brief update, really. Um, Soledad and Abigail and I met, I want to say a week or two ago, just to have some preliminary conversations about moving forward with the bylaws update. And um, I sent them some preliminary information, which I'm happy to share with the panel. That preliminary information included some examples of bylaws from other cities, schedule um, to get us through September, because we would really like to present the updated bylaws to the panel in September. And um, there was another document that I, well, obviously a copy of the bylaws, the current bylaws. <laughs> Um, and so we are scheduled to meet this week to go over the schedule just to make sure that it meshes. And we tried to keep, well, I tried to keep as much to what we discussed maybe two or three meetings ago with the um, the subcommittee meeting, you know, every other week. And in, there would be one community meeting. And then we would give another public meeting at a panel meeting about where we are with the update. So I did try my best to keep it. It's not perfect, but I tried to keep it like in that schedule because of the dates, how they change. It sometimes didn't fit, but I think um, what I propose will work. So once I think we're scheduled to meet this Thursday to finalize it. And so once we finalize it, I'm happy to share with um, the whole panel, and then I'll be working with Selena to put the public meeting um, part. It's, I think we schedule it for Tuesday evenings from six to seven your time. Um, so we'll have that um, on the website and with a Zoom link, and then she'll obviously send you all a calendar invite. And essentially, it's there to pop in, get an update, give us feedback. We'll have a kind of like a quasi agenda. And what I mean by quasi agenda would be like, we're going to be talking about this particular section of the bylaws. So like if you have thoughts on that particular section, um, you could come in to pop into that meeting to let us know what you think. If community has some thoughts, they can pop in and let us know, you know, what you think. Um, but then in addition, the panel will also have um, a brief update at the monthly monthly panel meetings. And so um that's kind of pretty much where we are really at the beginning stages. So just kind of confirming schedules, but our plan is to meet weekly. Um, and then we're gonna ramp up the amount of time. So we're gonna meet weekly probably for an hour and then ramp up as we start rolling up our sleeves. Um, but in the interim, if there are areas where you're like, I don't like this section of the bylaws or this section needs to change, or can we add this to the bylaws? If you have ideas on those already, it would be great for you to just send them to me because I'd like to make a running list. And then as we organize the changes that we're doing, I can plug in and say, oh, I got this from this panel member, you know, for these suggested changes. Um, so that would be helpful. You feel free to just send those to me directly. Um, but I think by our next or the next panel meeting, we'll have a more substantive update because we'll we'll have the schedule finalized. We'll have kind of the roadmap, the plan of, you know, how we're going to tackle the different sections of the bylaws. Um, and, you know, and then I'll obviously be able to share more specifics with, with panel members um, and, you know, and send you guys updates as we go along. But we are really, we're aiming for September, but obviously giving us some wiggle room because life happens for October, but definitely we're aiming for the September panel meeting. And I think we can make it, but you know how it is with the summer and schedules. So we're just giving us just the month of October as a buffer, but we're we're aiming for for September. Happy to answer any any questions on the bylaws. I will send periodic updates. You know what I mean. So you guys, you know, hear from me um, in between our monthly updates. So that you know kind of wh where we are. I think Lizzie was gonna say something. Sorry, Lizzie, I saw. All good, yeah. No, I was just curious if you had any specific guidance on like, if we do wanna send thoughts and suggestions and feedback, like 
do you, do you just want to hear about the sections we think are important to dig into and update or like specific language or like what kind of where should we try to come in on that spectrum of what all of the do? above i i will take any suggestions because i think I mean, as much as I love the ordinance, and we all know I love the ordinance, um, the bylaws is literally your working document. And so like you guys really have to be comfortable with it and it really has to reflect how you're conducting business. So whatever input language ideas you have on it, having that on the front end is very helpful. Yeah, so I'll take language ideas, criticisms like fair, this section sucks, please look at this more closely. You know what I mean? Like I'll take all of the above. And so, and it's not, you know, urgent a week or two would be, would be great. Um, I'm, I'm out of town next week. And so I don't think we start rolling up our sleeves until the week after. Mm -hmm. So um gives you a little bit of time to send me. And then obviously we'll take rolling feedback because we'll be working on it, you know, for the whole summer too. Okay, any other question, concerns, support? <laughs> yeah, the only thing I would say is please don't be shy. I'm, you know, obviously I think most of you guys know I'm very responsive. So if a random thought, even if it comes in at three o'clock in the morning, I'm not gonna respond at three o'clock in the morning, but please send it, I'll have it, I'll document it, I'll write you back when I wake up, you know what I mean? But just don't hesitate to share your thoughts with me on this because I would, you know, really appreciate you know, any ideas and stuff that you may have. All right, thank you everybody. Good to see all your Bye. faces. Thank you, Farah. Take care. Thanks. Okay, next on the agenda, we have confidential case review. Um, are we going to a breakout room for this? You're muted. Four years in and we're still doing it. Um, I was gonna say that's up to panel members whether they want to vote to do that or not. Okay, so the way that this works is that and if anyone uh, needs to have uh, like a confidential conversation regarding the case that Sherry sent, we need to uh, have a motion and a second to go into um, executive session or confidential session. Uh, if that's the case, uh, I think we are in a position to go uh, into a breakout room, have that confidential conversation, and then we come back to the public meeting. So if anyone has that. Um, I would motion to go to a breakout room just to check if anybody has specific questions right now. Um, so a motion to go to a breakout room. Do I have I'll a second? Like Sorry, Lizzie, did you second? Yes. Okay, great. So uh, we will go into a breakout room. Uh, it should be ab about 20 minutes for members of the public. So we'll, we should be back after that. That helped. <laughs> uh, could it be that we lost <laughs> the other members when leaving? Oh. Okay. Jason is in the attendees. Um, oh, so group. people need. Okay. Maybe Someone they to... accidentally left. I yeah, Jason is here. Okay, cool. But we need quorum. We need quorum. Okay. Well, it's closing out in 47 seconds. So whoever didn't leave will be in here. Oh, okay. <laughs> but it seems like everybody who was in there um, is back now, except AB. And Chico. Chico. Oh, and Chico. He came yeah, in here the only for a option second. I had... Oops, sorry. Go ahead. So no. uh, sorry. He just, uh, he was in here for a second and then he left. So maybe he accidentally pressed end twice and accidentally got out. Oh, okay. AB is here. AB is back. All right. Okay. Right. Two, four, six. Okay. Um, quick question. 
for panel. So in this the agenda, we have a five minute break right now. Would you um, prefer to do case voting and then we take the break or do we prefer to have a break right now? I'm going to see some nodding. So should we do? We have. Oh, and then Bill and Chico are in the participants or attendees or. OK, so. So let's vote vote with. Um, cases and case assignment, and then after that, we can take a five minute break. OK. Especially since people have some people have sketchy reception and things. I think that's a really yeah. good idea. OK, thankful that we can all <laughs> came back. Okay, is this, is it me reading the cases and okay, um, we're not reading the whole cases, are we? No, just naming them. I think it's just the the number and then what rule violations, not even the allegations. Just you know, this involved rule one, rule four, and rule six. Oh, okay. is what I recall. Okay, so uh, case MI twenty twenty four zero nineteen, um. Officer one, uh, the allegations are against officer one, rule one, compliance with values, rules, and general orders, rule four, respect for others, rule three, truthfulness. Officer two is body one camera and personal recording devices deactivated. Uh, officer five, rule four, respect for others. Officer six, rule six, use of force. Um, unknown officer, rule six, use of force. Um, okay, those are the allegations. So uh, do we want to review this case uh, for yes? Who's voting yes? One, two, three, four. Okay. AB, um, if you can't turn your camera on, can you say yes or no, please? Okay. Sorry, what was that vote? If we just put it as an abstention? Yeah, I'm, I got okay. seven. Any no's? Oops, sorry, that's your dev, so that. No, go for it. I'm, I'm texting you. Okay. So we don't have any no's and no abstentions. So uh, MI 2024-20, okay. Um, officer one, rule one, compliance with values, rules, and general orders, um, failure to complete a sufficient investigation. That's the only um, rule. So again, do we have a vote? for yes to review this case. Okay. No, I'm going to say for not reviewing one. Okay. So bill is a no. Just saying that we're getting them. Okay. Do you do you have the vote? Selena? I have six. So that I didn't see a vote for Oh, you. I'm a no. Sorry. Okay. I'm as well. I'm so sorry. I'm okay. trying to figure oh. So is that eight? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Next, we have MI 2024-021. Uh, officer 1, Rule 1, Compliances, uh, with values, rules, and general orders. Officer two, rule one, compliance with values, rules, and general orders. Of, um, yeah, that those are the two um, rules involved. So for a yes vote. Only two. For no, 
no vote. I'm a no as well. Four no's. Five no's. And Bill. Okay, Bill, if you're abstaining, you have to yell. <laughs> we have to yes and no. Okay. Um, next case is MI 2024-022. Officer one, rule three, truthfulness. Uh, rule one, compliance with values, rule and general orders. Rule six, use of force. Rule one, compliance with values, rules and general orders. Um, that's it for uh, votes for yes to reviewing this case. Five. I'm a yes as well. This is AB. Thank you, AB. Okay. Do you have that, Selena? Yes. And Bill is a uh, yes. Seven. I got seven. Okay. Next case is MI 2024 0 23. Um, officer one, rule one, compliance with values, rules, and general orders. For um, a yes vote in reviewing this case. Okay, for no vote in reviewing this case. Okay. And Bill. So is that okay. seven no? Seven no and yeah. Okay. Um I'm gonna look there because I have my screen over there. I'm a no. Okay. Oh. Thank you, AB. Okay. Um MI 2024-024, Officer One, Rule One, Compliance with Values, Rule Rules and General Orders. Rule two, respect for others. Rule five, police authority and public trust. Rule five, police authority and public trust. Officer two, rule five, police authority and public trust. And another rule five, uh, same police authority and public trust. Officer three, rule five, same police authority and public trust. Surgeon one, rule five, police authority and public trust. Um, those will be the allegations. So for a yes vote to review in this case, one. Uh, four yes, five yes. I'm a yes. Okay. okay. For no, thank you, Bill. Okay, Chico. Thank you. Okay, next case, MI 2024 025. Uh, the allegations are Detective 1, Rule 1, compliance with values, rules, and general orders. Rule 1, same compliance with values, rules, and general orders. Rule 4, respect for others. Rule 4, respect for others. Rule 4, so three accusations on allegations, I'm sorry, and rule for respect for others. Um, for a yes vote on reviewing this case. Two, for a no vote. I'll be a yes, I'll be a oh, yes vote. AB is a yes, okay. For no vote now. Okay, Selena, did, did you get that? Yes? Yeah, I got three okay. yes and five no. Sure. That's what I got too. Okay. Okay, am I 2024-026? Um, we actually don't have allegations, it's just a complaint. So um, for a yes vote in review in this case, None for a no vote.
Bill is a no. A, B. I'm a no. Okay. Great. Are we okay? We have every, like everyone, all the cases. Yes. Um, Sherry, do you want to do case assignments uh, right now or when we're back from the break? Uh, as long as no one leaves during the break. I mean, if if people leave, we, you can do whatever you want. Your okay. Show. People, do you need, do we go one more minute and assign cases? Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. I don't remember what were the cases, so you go through, Sherry. The cases um, that we decided to review. Okay. I have 19, uh, 20, 20, and actually my notes look horrible for 22 and 23. Selena? Okay. I have um, 19, 22, and 24. That's what I have. Yeah, that seems about right. Twenty-two and twenty-four. Yes. Okay. Now my notes make sense. Okay. So let us see. There's a question. question. Yeah, Lizzie. Yeah, I just had a quick suggestion. If folks, if other folks would also find this helpful, um, we have a document that kind of shows how many cases folks are currently signed up for. Um, could we take perhaps a quick look at that document before we sign up so we can get a sense of the distribution of workload so far, just so we all know where we are? Um, Would that be helpful for anyone? Uh, okay. Can you put oh. the link in the chat? Or is that? Yeah. I just went to, an, I, I have a feeling I need to refresh it. It said something is preventing us from sharing at this time. Please try later. Can um, we? Maybe try it now, Sherry. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, wait, do we have a chat? Where is it? Um, we do. Sorry, I, it's just um, off my. We do, but I'm not sure if this. I need to. It's just to the panelist and the host. Okay. Oops. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you for that. Thank you. Milan, I would start okay. with that one. Okay. To kind of briefly explain, so I think you're going to be in the meeting in, oh yeah, meeting and trainings, just kind of, they're all highlighted in mm -hmm. oh, our yeah. case reviews. I'm sorry, go to the case uh, yeah. reviews tab. Down at the bottom sheet. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so is everyone able to see the spreadsheet? Yeah. Okay. So Victor volunteered for the first two cases that we were reviewing. And I see that Victor only has two cases, so we can we can have him sign to that one. Are we are we off looking for volunteers first and and or just assigning from the jump? Um, I'm just adding Victor because he texted me and said, "Sign me up for the first two cases." So oh, oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> I'm okay. signing up with Victor. Yeah, yeah. He's a vet, and I'm new. I'm happy to um, volunteer with Victor. Okay, okay, perfect. So we have two. We need. Okay. I can I can be on nineteen too. So we want Chico. And then it was A B also. Yeah. Okay. I would be happy to do nineteen as well. Jason. 
I am always happy to put other people. Okay, 22. Volunteers, Milan. And Bill also in the chat. Um, let's see. You said Bill and Milan? And Victor, right? Since that's the first two yeah. places. Oh, you're Thank right. You. So we're three. I am. Well done. Perfect. Um, okay. 2020, 2020, 24. I can do that one. Okay. Was that Luna? Luna. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm looking at the spreadsheet, so I yeah, yeah. can't see faces. Uh, I can join you now. Okay. We need one more person. We might consider adding Madeline if we think she'd be okay with that. Um, I know she's recovering, so she wasn't sure. So totally fair. Okay. Mila? Yeah, I'm into it. Oh. Okay. Well, great. We deserve a break. Thank you, Lizzie, for reminding us of looking at this. It was super helpful. Thank you. I totally forgot about it. So, uh, okay. So it's seven forty. Uh, should we uh, be back at seven forty-five? Okay. Works for me. Okay. Okay, so um, IPM report, Sherry. All right, give me a moment. Can people see the screen? All right. Okay. Okay, the stuff in my in my screen that I don't want to see. Um, this is the May 2024 Boulder Police Oversight uh, May meeting, Independent Police Monitors Report. Um, in the month of April, we completed uh, zero full case file reviews. Um, Zero case files review were completed and pending uh, BPD disposition. And um, as of uh, half an hour ago, we had 12 cases uh, awaiting panel review. Okay. The cases that have been completed in May, um, MI2024-004, it involved an incident where officers responded to a theft just occurred call from a convenience store. Um, officer one had a rule one allegation, respect for other. Officer one told the manager that the store clerk was a problem and that he shouldn't be working there anymore. Um, I recommended that this case be closed unfounded in accordance with GO 120-1 section eight and the department agreed on that. Um, I also recommended that officer one receive coaching from a, a Boulder Police Department supervisor on what information and opinion are appropriate to share with members of the public. 
and it was reported that the officer's sergeant was advised to counsel the officer accordingly. Um, MI 2024-010, um, BPD responded to a car crash during an accident alert event. Um, the officer, or the allegations for officer one and two um, are all similar. And that was a um, rule four, respect for others, failed to offer assistance. Um, rule four, respect for other, harassed the woman. Um, rule one, compliance with values, rules, and general orders. General order 309, traffic accidents response. Officers turned away witnesses and failed to obtain their statements. Officers one and two, rule four, respect for others. Officers discouraged them from filing a police report. Um, and rule four, officers, or respect for other officers were not helpful in obtaining a tow truck. All of these allegations, um, I recommend it be unfounded in accordance with General Order 120-1, Section 8, and the department agreed. Um, so all of these allegations were unfounded. Um, I, however, recommended that Officer 2 receive additional coaching on appropriate body-worn camera activation slash deactivation policy. And it was reported from the professional standards units uh, that the officers sergeants were advised to counsel them accordingly. Um, I also recommended that the police department stop using the term accident to describe traffic crashes and instead adopt the term crash to be in alignment with the language preferred by the city of Boulder's transportation and mobility department and their vision zero policy. The department agreed and um, I've been provided with draft general orders um, that are related to traffic um, and traffic crash responses to review as they're in draft mode. Um, I, also, I also recommended that the department should consider whether additional training on traffic protocol is appropriate for these officers specifically or patrol officers in general. And uh, their response, the department's response on that is still pending. Um, and I suggested that the, or recommended that the officers receive uh, coaching um, as a, on the general order 201, which is report writing. And I was informed by the professional standards units that their ser sergeants were advised to counsel those officers accordingly. For MI 2024-012, um, this involved, um, uh, officer one responding to a civil standby while one roommate finished moving out of her previous apartment and completed minor move out repairs. Um, officer one had a rule four allegation, respect for others, uh, demonstrated a buddy buddy relationship with another person at the scene of an incident and a rule one, compliance with values, rules, and general orders, general order 203, investigative responsibilities and case assignments, failed to address harassment. Both of those allegations I recommended be unfounded um, in accordance with General Order 120-1, Section 8, and the department agreed with that. I also recommended that the department should consider whether there are other government resources or referrals available to um, support the complaining roommate. And the police department, um, they conducted um, additional follow-up with their CERT team. Um, so CERT is engaged with continuing calls for service that are ongoing, um, and they will uh, um, continue to attempt reaching out to him. Um, PSU also emailed all members of the department asking them to document um, the future engagements with this roommate in a report. And the goal is to forward their interactions and any continued escalations to adult protective services. Um, MI 2024-015, um, a man alleged that Officer 1 was rude during their interaction. Um, Officer 1 had two allegations, uh, Rule 4, respect for others. Officer 1 was not nice to the man on the night of X date. And that Rule 4, respect for others, Officer 1 shorted a man of necessary clothing at feet forward on X date. Both of those um, allegations I recommended be unfounded in accordance to General Order 120-1, Section 8, and the department agreed 
with the, those unfounded recommendations. Um, and officer two had an allegation of rule four, respect for others, um, harassed a man. And um, I recommended officer one's allegation be unfounded and the department agreed and it was unfounded in accordance with general order 120-1 section eight. And for MI2024-018, a woman alleged that officers did not conduct sufficient investigations to recover books she loaned out in 2018 and 2022. Um, an unknown officer, the allegation is rule one, compliance with values, rules, and general orders, general order 203 dash investigative responsibilities and case assignments. An unknown officer failed to comply with general order 203. Um, I recommended that allegation be unfounded and the department determined that it would be unfounded in accordance with General Order 120-1, Section 8. And Officer 1 um, had a Rule 1 allegation, Compliance with Values, Rules, and General Orders, General Order 203, Investigative Responsibilities and Case Assignments, failed to comply with General Order 203. Both of those, or both myself and the department agreed that the allegation be, should be unfounded. Um, in accordance with General Order 120-1, Section 8. Um, I also recommended that Officers 1 and 2 receive counseling that um, recording telephone conversations with their body-worn camera does not adequately capture the other party's side of the conversation. Um, so I suggested that if BPD has instructed its officers that body-worn camera sufficiently captures non-speaker phone telephone conversations, then I recommend reevaluating those instructions. And... I was told that the professional standards units um, had reported that the officer sergeants were advised to counsel the officers accordingly. Um, regarding um, the April 2024 monthly case statistics, I the IPM classified nine cases, eight were identified as misconduct investigations, zero serious misconduct, one community inquiry, zero community feedback, zero conflict facilitation process. I observed 10 interviews in April and I would, for critical incident scene response, I did not respond um, on scene. There was a non-fatal situation. I was notified by telephone after the scene was already processed. Um, and I determined, I deemed their own complete five investigations and BPD closed five investigations. Um, as of May 7th, the open docket for independent police monitor slash panel cases was 29. Um, 24 of those cases were classified and five of them were pending my classification. Um, regarding the 2023 open cases, there are four cases. Um, MI2023-018, it was closed out, but in early May, so you'll read the out or hear the outcome in my next month's report. Um, MI2023-028 is um, awaiting chief of police review. MI2023-033 is in chain of command review. That officer had been um, on extended leave, um, returned in March, and we interviewed um, in April of 2024, MI 2023-034 is in chain of command review, and um, that is a case that the panel will be taking also. Um, and MI 2023-035 is also in chain of command review. Of, it will get panel case review and ready, um, and that investigation was one that I deemed thorough and complete in April. And just giving an update on the December 17th, 2023 fatal officer involved shooting. And um, this was the one the Boulder County District Attorney determined no charges were appropriate. And um, I don't know if people looked at the at the video that you were sent an email about, but there is additional footage that the city released um, on its public website that is available to view. And um, I expected last month that we would already have a um, force review scheduled with BPD. Apparently they are having um, problems. There's so much zip filed footage that they are going to have to put it on hard drives for the, the people who are going to review it. 
So the standard methods of storing and sharing the documents are, are proving to be some sort of technological challenge to BPD. So they're seeking to overcome this hurdle. Um, but I will keep you apprised as things develop. My community engagement for um, April 2024, I toured the Boulder Homeless Shelter and I'm continuing the collaboration with the Center for People with Dis Disabilities. We have our upcoming um, public safety listening session on May 18th. Um, in this, members of the Boulder area disability community can speak directly with the Boulder Police Department and Boulder Fire Department about concerns and challenges that they face during interaction with first responders. Um, it's not community engagement, um, but I did wanna share that uh, a few weeks ago, um, during one week, I attended uh, seven briefing sessions that were presentations that were delivered by the professional standards unit to the um, patrol officers. Um, so they were describing the police oversight system, and I was there to add some input about the civilian aspect of it and answer questions. Um, one thing that was pretty clear was that the officers had a lot more questions than what we could answer in the half hour time allotted. So I'm scheduled um, next week again to do another round of, of briefings to give them more information about the civilian side of oversight and answer some of their questions. And that is my report. Um, Lizzie, and then- Yeah, Anna. question. Um, I'm happy to hear those briefing sessions are happening and, and there were was lots of engagement. That's great. Um, I'm curious just to get an idea of like what, what some of the questions revolved around, what were some of the areas where the, the officers didn't feel like they had enough information yet or wanted to learn more about? Um, well, one thing I, um, it was, it was the professional standards units. They were, you know, I was invited to join along, but they're the ones who put on the training. And I thought that it was a much bigger overview about the oversight system as a whole. And it, it seemed like officers, it didn't answer officers' questions um, about like, how does this actually impact them? Like, what could they expect to happen? So I plan to share some information about um, like when in the, the oversight system they get involved and they get notified and what they can expect. Um, I've, I've observed a few officers come in um, like shallow, shallow, fast breathing, like almost trembling hands for relatively minor um, allegations. And um, I want them to be able to have a forum where they can ask and I can provide more information about that because that's, um, that's not something that um, I think anyone wants to have happen. Um, they also had some of the same, some similar questions, um, about, um, me like looking for complaints in, by watching body worn camera video and, um, concerns that they're being held to a standard of, of perfection when it comes to, um, like body worn camera activation and, um, trying to think of what were some of the other, other concerns that they had. Um, maybe I'll answer Melen's question and I'll try to remember some of them. Yeah. I have, I have several questions. So if anybody needs to, has a question, I'm happy to step back. Um, on case 2024, I think 015, there's a term I didn't understand, shorted. What did that mean? Uh, that was a direct quote from the, from the complainant okay so i'm not understanding that that part of the of the complaint that um anyway or the um the other question i have um is about the shooting um incident um the bpd or at least i think when we met with interim chief redfern he'd said that um anybody, any members of the public could have access to the video and just needed to ask for them. Uh, extra videos besides the ones that were on the website. And I've heard that 
um, when the members of the press and the public tried to get those videos, they were asked to pay um, for it. Um, and so I'm just wondering, is that, um, has that changed or how is that going for the members of the public who want to see those videos? Because if they are accessible to the, if, if the members of the public can have access to the videos, as said by BPD, um, I don't believe that they should be paying for them. Um, not everybody can afford that, but everybody should have. Maybe it's a question for Sterling. I don't know. Um, but I just wanted to know the status of that, if anybody knows. I, I don't know, and I, I don't remember Redfern saying that any member of the public could have access to any of the videos but I'm I believe he said so when when we met with him but um yeah so in general there's um there's a fee that's applied for all kind of like records requests so pretty much anybody that's not a victim um they're, they're they charge a fee it's basically to cover the cost of the time for the people that have to um, put it together and then uh, like package it and send it out I would make the recommendation that we don't say that the videos are available to any members of the public, but are available with a fee so that people know that they're actually not, you know, freely available. Because, um, thank you. And then um, I had another question because you, you mentioned like participating in training and all that. I think for, um, I've been asking about the um, trainings in, DEI that police is going through and I would like to participate to that if that's possible and maybe other members of this panel would like to do that as well. I'm really interested in seeing how um, DEI is taught to police and how different it is for, you know, um, police than other DEI trainings I've participated in. I'm really, um, really interested in that and in learning. Um, so I'm wondering if um, I know that when I first asked, I wanted to observe, but I was told that I have to participate. So um, I would like to do that. I can pass that along to the police department or Sterling can pass that along yeah, to the and, police department. And I'm wondering if other Both. people also are interested in that. Just a reminder on that note, um, maybe we can send a, an email reminder of how to get the um, ride-alongs set up and scheduled. I don't know if maybe that will be a column to add to a spreadsheet um, because that's a requirement for the uh, in the new ordinance that we have to do the ride-along. So I know a few of um, our panelists. Oh my gosh, Jason! <laughs> a few of, uh, a few panelists have done it already, but I also know that there's a few myself that we haven't scheduled it yet. So, uh, just a reminder of how the process uh, go. Milan, your hand is up. I, d I did my ride along, and it was pretty easy once I knew. You know, Sherry, I thank you for already my request to someone and then it was super easy. Um, also, I'm just going to say I picked the 9 p.m. to 3 a.m. Saturday nights thinking that it was going to be a wild boulder and wanting to see as much as possible and it was pretty quiet. So um, pick your hours carefully. <laughs> but I, I'm really glad I did it and we'll probably do it again. Do you have any... Um... Thank you for doing it and for sharing that. Do you have any um, like suggestions or or thoughts you'd like to share so that when people do it, they can get the most out of it? So I was I was riding with a surgeon and and so we had a we were in a car that didn't have um, a quote unquote cage in the back, and so. If somebody feel more comfortable writing with someone else, I think that they should ask for um, writing with a surgeon with that kind of car so that we can be two people in the car because they cannot make arrests. They just go to to um, uh, incidents 
and are there and participate in them, but they are not the the person doing arrest. So if, if anybody doesn't feel comfortable being by themselves in a police car, I would recommend that they, they request that. Um, in terms of the time or anything like that, um, you know, it really depends on your availability. And um, I, I don't know, I thought it was really interesting. And there was, you know, something did happen that I'm still thinking about. It's not like it's eventless, but it's pretty quiet in Boulder. In general, we have a very safe city, um, according to the sergeant I was with. So, and Jason, you, you also did a ride along, so feel free to chime in as well. Uh, I'm, I don't know if this is the best way of doing it or not, but I tried not to really interject in anything. I, I just was trying to observe and, um, and, you know, afterwards I might ask a question or two about why somebody did something or so I can better understand their thought process, but I wasn't there to try to say right or wrong or, or to, you know, tell them what to do. I was just trying to observe and bring a jacket. Quick question, were you able to ask questions uh, while doing the ride along or you, you stayed like in the quiet side? No, I, I we we talked nearly the entire time. It, it was, um, and after an arrest was made and we were, I, I mean, we didn't have anybody in the back. It was just me and him. And after that was over, I was at just asking questions as to why certain things happened and what about this and what about that. Um, not in an accusatory manner, but just sort of, I've heard about these things and I want to know, you know, what, the, what the choice make, uh, choices were. Yeah, I had pretty much the same experience. I was thinking that the officer had been there already for like quite a few hours before I joined and, uh, but that talking to me for the entire evening was probably really exhausting, but um, just asking questions. Yeah. Asking questions, understanding how they work and, you know, uh, figuring out together which incidents we should go to um, things like that. But yeah, questions um, they are very open. So that was really nice. I see your hand up Sterling. I just want to offer again, if anybody um, doesn't feel comfortable uh, going with a random person, I'm happy to uh, change my schedule a little bit and um, take whoever on a ride for however long you want to ride for. Thank you. Um, and while we're talking about ride alongs, the briefings, if, if you can, if it works with your schedule to attend a briefing, I think it's really helpful. Um, so those briefings are at 6 a.m., um, 2 p.m., and then and 9 p.m. at night. So that's the way that the officers start their shift and they learn, you know, what what's happening that they should know about or be on the lookout for. Um, sometimes they have trainings that are part of their briefings, and sometimes it's more just, uh, you know, here's the here's the information and roll out. Um, but I think I I learned a lot the first time from being at a briefing. So I would recommend if it works with your schedule doing that. Um, and there's also the walk along option if you don't wanna be in a car. Um, so I don't know, Sterling, maybe this is for you, but do we need to schedule the same way or kind of uh, prepare in advance to, to attend the briefings or we show up at six? I think the way I did it is I picked one of the briefings like time as a starting point so if you want to do in the morning go go at six mm. i went at nine so that i could attend the briefing um yeah and then i think yeah so were you I, were you sorry okay were you asking specifically about briefings or yeah uh, so i would schedule in advance um okay. because sometimes if we do have a training there's gonna be some trainings that um just aren't going to be appropriate uh, for civilians to go to, like if we're, um, <clears throat> it might be showing images regarding uh, sex assaults or child abuse that it may not just uh, may not want to see, or um, we may not have a briefing at all based on um, other department training 
Um, like we, if we're doing some kind of a defensive tactics or something like that, we're not going to have the typical type of briefing. So definitely a schedule in advance. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And that's with Bethany, but I, we can make sure to recirculate her, her email again so that people have it. Okay, great. Um, okay, Sherry, you keep on going. Oh, where that's a, let me see what the next thing is. Thank you. Uh, the brief on the training. Yeah. Um, some of you have filled out the survey. Um, it sort of ended, you know, in a way where we didn't really feel like it had an ending and more like people sort of peeled off when they, when they had to. So this is regarding the training at the Boulder police department. Um, I said in my email to you all, like, I think that it's very obvious that people have a lot of appetite for, you know, learning more about policing. And um, I need to remember that what I know about policing is not what a, a person who hasn't been in criminal justice knows about policing. So um, there's just a lot of information that people are really eager to learn. Um, so one thing I think I want to do is probably just start scheduling sometimes like during lunch hour where like, here's the topic that I'm going to talk about. If you can come and you have capacity, I'll share that as opposed to trying to find a time when all of us can get together. Um, but I think that would be would be helpful and those trainings might meander a bit. Um, so that was one of my takeaways is that um, it's that you, you guys have a hunger for learning more about mm -hmm. policing. So I need to start working on, on fulfilling that. Okay. So that's one of the, well, um, some other things that were pretty clear from, um, from the surveys was that there was a concern about time management at the training and the fact that it seemed like we didn't get to everything. So that's something that we're just going to have to talk with BPD about, um, how do we fill in those, how do we fill in those blanks? And probably in general, like, it's great to hear all of the questions, but if we're there to get a taste of the training that BPD perform, you know, gives its officers, mm -hmm. um, that we should try to curtail our questions and, and let the training happen um, and save it for the end, I think. Mm -hmm. Sounds great. But that visit, the, the watching some of those like on the floor, um, it's wow. been it's been already helpful in some cases that um, that you'll be seeing next month. Um, but it it really helped me focus like where I need to be looking in the in the incident to see what people are doing. So that was really helpful for me. I don't know if anyone else wants to share any takeaways. Milan. Sorry, I always have comments, but um, I had questions actually about the way they were taking down people, but I had to leave, so I never got to ask those questions. So I would love to revisit it a little bit because I guess I missed like half an hour of that conversation since um I had to leave. But um, so um, yeah, I I'm I would love to continue that training and and um continue seeing how um, the officers operate. I think that's really interesting. So thank you. Okay. Great. Um, annual report and newsletter. Um, my hope is to have it out at the end of June or very early July. Um, I'm saying this because I need to put more effort into doing it and less effort into some of the cases and things. Well, not less effort into cases, but I'm, I'm saying in a public forum so that it holds me accountable. Um, but the previous annual reports, there was, um, you know, letters from the co-chairs and, you know, this past, this is a report on 2023, which was a, a year with a lot of things that happened and changed. Um, so, the panel, I assume, wants to have, um, you know, I, I don't know that I'm the person who should who should write that narrative. Um, I certainly can, but if the panel wants to do that, I think they, they have like first dibs on on writing the narrative of what happened over 2023, and 
So if they're going, if the panel's going to do that, um, they should, they should like get on it and figure out who's going to, who's going to do that and then get it, get it approved by the rest of the panel members. Okay. So I think maybe this is one of the ad hoc committees that Farah talked about, um, which kind of, uh, so let me nicely to our next topic. So items not submitted to the agenda in advance. Um, I got a suggestion that we go uh, and take a look at subcommittees and if people like who is signed up where in attendance, kind of checking in on that. Um, is in the same spreadsheet with um, the current members' uh, information in our SharePoint. Um, and yeah, I'll say a lot of people signed up. Uh, just a reminder that we all need to be uh, assigned to a committee. So, um, yeah, maybe we can, so I don't know what the best way will be to proceed on this. I do feel that the annual report, we, we should have it this year. <laughs> so, um, uh, also, also governance committee is not meeting because we're doing bylaws. So, and I don't want to put the annual report staff on the community engagement committee so maybe if we can if someone wants to volunteer to start drafting an annual report uh we could do that and then the rest of the group can review i'm just going to gauge interest is anyone interested in helping with that it should I, I would assume it should be not the new panelists it should be on old panelists that were here old very old panelists who were here last year which tenured panelists tenured yeah more seasoned uh which will be milan jason chico lizzie maybe a little bit Halfway. i was here for all of 2023 only the second half so i feel like i'm not best suited but happy to help once someone starts okay do we have volunteers or i know people are super busy but we can we can start drafting something I just don't have the capacity, but I'm happy to review or edit whatever is written. Um, okay. So, yeah, but I don't have the capacity to, my brain is fried. Okay. So, uh, why don't we do this? In our co-chairs meeting, we will follow up with this. Maybe if this is something that uh, Victor and I can start. And then we can have your eyes and additions to whatever we come up with. Does that sound like a plan, Lizzie? I think that sounds great with the added note, maybe that, so it sounds like Sherry, do you prepare the rest of the report and then we prepare the panel comments or what does the rest of that process look like? I just wanna make sure. I, have I mean, it, it can be whatever we choose to okay. make it. Um, I was pan planning on basically just trying to do what had been done in the past, but knowing that it was going to have to have a um, uh, a heavy narrative section because of all of, you know, the moratorium, the strike, the new ordinance, the new IBM, like there's a lot of, there was a lot of change that happened in 2023. So I think that's actually um, in some ways, like the easiest and the most fun, um, and like probably the most interesting part, um, as opposed to seeing the results of cases and more dry material. Um, so I was planning on contributing the, you know, breakdown of cases and what the outcomes were. I've asked, um, Daniel, Dr. Daniel Reinhardt to, you know, pull up some of that that data from 2023, similar to what had been in in prior reports. Um, but you know what, it's it's not as if this is something that's prescribed by ordinance that it has to be done this way. Um, so we can change it, and I expect that 
you know, whatever we do next year is going to probably feel more like our own. Um, but yeah. Okay, great. Um, so I think if we don't have anything further, we can jump into public comment. I know there's one member of the public present. Um, so I don't have a way to show on screen the timer, except that I'm doing this. So I can do this, keep it here, and we keep an eye. And if someone can help me calling out the time. Um, do we have um uh, is there a system to or to to have people join us in open comments um we need to make them panelists i guess right no so, um, so do you want to let them know how long they have for open comments sure and so open kind of go over the rules thank you for that um yeah. Let me look at the rules. When... I have so many tabs open. Okay. So um, every member of the public is going to be asked if they like to comment and unmute to answer. Uh, the public will get two uh, minutes without interruption. If there is an interruption or loss of connection, we will stop the clock. Um, and uh, I will let them know uh, when they have 20 seconds uh, before reaching their time. And panelists may, may offer short responses at the end of the comment if anyone wants to comment on that. Um, the reason that, I, and I just wanna say this, we are sticking to the two minutes, is it's consistent with other boards and um, open comment that is customary to have two minutes. So that's why we're we're sticking with the two minutes right now. Okie dokie. Okay, so let me um, allow Lynn to speak. If yeah, you want so to... That's not right. Um, there's actually three minutes on most all of the boards that um, for for public comment. Um, the city council is the one that has two minutes. So this is really constraining. Mm. I have a lot to say. Okay. Mahoney is a, um, so if you can get that to three, that'd be great. Um, um, okay. Let's do this, Lynn. Uh, I'm going to start the, um, the timer and let's um, do three minutes. And um, thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. So let me do this. So here we go. Great. So um, I had an interaction with Mahoney um, on the Pearl Mall. There was a woman playing music and this other guy next to her. And I just went over to them and Mahoney had left. And so she, she was, they were having kind of an argument of sorts and Mahoney had left. So first I tried to get Mahoney and see what was that about? Because I really like community policing. And um, Mahoney said, I won't talk to you. And so then I walked over to the couple and and um, the woman is kind of a biggish woman. You might recognize her, but um, the guys backed her up that it was really unnecessary. And Mahoney didn't appear to be making an arrest or anything. And it was, I guess, for their playing music and having their stuff out, you know, and they have the homeless that appeared they were probably homeless, have a lot of stuff. Um, I had a good interaction with someone called Fly something. What you've got only one guy with Fly. Who is that? The he says his name is the way you remember it is Fly, and he didn't give me his first name. So, and I can't remember last names very well. Fly, and then some kind of animal that eats wood. Plywood, and then some animal that eats wood. Do you know Ply? He has the he had the only cop car that has blackish windows, and you're trying to get rid of those, and you're short twenty um, patrol cars. I understand too, and um, I, it was so ironic because I he was at the library, and I walked up to his car because I had just had an interaction crossing the street with a, a not a police car, but a car that was turning right. 
and um, I was jacked in between them and a car that was turning left into my path and I couldn't see them. It was black. They couldn't, I could not see if they saw me, you know, on my bike. Um, so I asked him, how black can you have windows, you know, like, cause it was potentially causing a crash there because his car was coming, you know, down and wanting to turn and I was wanting to get his attention and, you know, um, and he said, oh, we actually can't have it. And this is the only cop car that has the black tint, mm -hmm. the dark tint, and they're getting rid of that. But they, they, you're short 20 cop cars. And, um, the, you know, I mean, our budget this week, I heard is just horrible, like bad for everything. And I follow about eight city boards. Yeah. Um, you have so 20 seconds left, Lynn. Okay, so that was kind of disturbing. Um, but I wanted to bring up Aralena or the woman that was shot. I wanted to know why the front desk didn't right away ask the guy that the guy had said she had a gun, but why wasn't that um, alerted to? Why didn't the guy, um, why did the police come right then um, if that was necessary. I didn't understand that, Darn. I'll have to, oh, it's forever until you have another open comment, isn't it? Yeah, thank you, Lynn. I uh, don't yeah. understand my my concern about. Yeah, thank you, Lynn. Uh, your, your time is up, I'm sorry. Uh, does any panel member wants to address Lynn? Just to address the, the last question, we'll have the next open comment at our next monthly meeting in four weeks. Okay. Great. Um, I don't see anyone else, Selena. Do, do we have anyone else? No, right? No. Okay. Okay, so I think that's it. Oh, 831. Wow. Yay us. Okay. Uh, so I think we're we're good to wrap up unless anyone has something else to add. Nope. Great. So uh, we will see each other in our next committee meetings and if not next month. Right. Have a great, great uh, rest of your week. Thanks for facilitating Soledad. Yes. Thank Good you. Aruf. Thank you. Great job, co-chair. Yep. Nice job. Thank you. Okay. Bye, everyone.